Hello, welcome to another round of championship predictions for the Honest Football Podcast. I'm Craig Savage, and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Let's have a quick recap of what happened on match day 22. And there were five perfect scores. Four of them were draws. That were the perfect scores. Overall, three for myself, two for Daniel Cody. My three perfect scores were Huddersfield beat Coventry, which was a late goal for Coventry. Luton versus Fulham. So it's the first correct Luton scoreline for both of us, considering we're Luton fans. So it's taken us nearly halfway to get one right. Uh, and Millsborough away at Stoke was nil-nil. Daniel Cody's two perfect scores were Birmingham City versus Cardiff, which ended 2-2. And Preston beating Barnsley by two goals to one. However, I win match day 22 with 11 points compared to Daniel Cody's eight there was one game called off right at the end, Sheffield United versus QPR, because there was COVID in the QPR ranks. We wish everyone at QPR a speedy recovery. Let's go on to match day 23. We are now halfway in this championship season. Let's start with Friday night kickoff. It is Barnsley versus West Bromwich Albion. Barnsley losing at home, uh, losing away, sorry, to Preston under uh, Ryan Lowe, new manager there. And West Brom back to winning ways, 1-0 home win against Reading. Yeah, and it should have been more for West Brom. I will mention it a bit more with Reading, but possibly the greatest goal line clearance I've ever seen from Andy Carroll's diving header, which you did we you did point out before the match day. In fairness to you, um, but West Brom, look, it was a it was a win, and that's what it had to be at the moment. Because despite the fact we've said for a few weeks now they're not playing well, they've been a little bit fortunate at times to get results. They're now three points off Bournemouth and five points off the top because the others are dropping points and. West Brom have already had their bad spell. It was a really good performance. 25 shots, 11 on target, nearly 60% of the ball. Loads of proper good chances as well, not just loads that put the stats up. Barnsley, it's the same worrying signs, isn't it? Am I too early to say this? I think they're down. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I'll see what you think when you get to that prediction. But Barnsley, for me, if they don't get a result in this one, at the halfway point, they're going to be at least eight points adrift. And that's only to a team with points deductions. So I'm going for a West Brom win. I think they'll take some of their chances. They're due to beat someone heavily. And with the chances they made in the last game, if they repeat that, it's going to be a big one. I'm going to go for West Brom, 4-1. Bold start. No, I have to agree on the... Yeah, the, the gap is getting bigger between Barnsley and Reading, who are in 21st at the moment. They have to obviously worry about that gap because... You don't want to be cut adrift. Obviously, Derby are down there because they've had points deduction for themselves and it, 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 it'll be a, a miracle for them to get out of that Derby. So, Barnes have really got to start pulling their way. Two wins all season is not going up to 22 games. That's I think West Brom, win. West Brom need that sort of win. The ground out, 1-0 win. Wasn't pretty again. Robinson scoring for the first time in a while. That's, that's a confidence boost to him. I'm going to go uh, Barnsley nil, West Brom 2. Let's go on to Saturday, early kickoffs. Uh, game number one, it is Cardiff City versus Derby County. Uh, Cardiff came back from 2 0 down and Derby won at home. Yeah, Derby, a really good win. Obviously, we mentioned about Blackpool recently, but Derby had to still take advantage. And again, they're not going to win games by two, three, four goals. They've got to grind out every win they get, but they're still fighting and they're still putting in a great effort. Cardiff. Last last dash of the game for the equaliser in the 91st minute. They're doing much better under Steve Morrison, but the concern will be that they're starting to concede a lot of goals again. Five in the last two games. And I know three were after the red card against Sheffield United, but they're still in that fight. With Peter Bruin in last week, they're only three points away. And with their goal difference, you just feel they might start to look down again. Cardiff at home, still the worst team in the league. We've mentioned that a few times. Seven points from 11 games. They conceded 18 in those, only scored nine. But Derby aren't much better on the road. And they've only scored five goals away from home all year. So I hate to say it based on both of the defensive records, but everything's edging towards a nil-nil here. So I'm going to throw that one out for a classic 12-30 start. Cardiff, obviously, I think they've got to be careful as well because, as you said, Peterborough obviously won last week, closes the gap up, uh, gives Peterborough a really good chance. It's, it looks like, a, at the moment, a four-horse race for that final relegation spot at the moment. Derby, they'll be obviously confidence is up again, winning at Blackpool. Blackpool obviously haven't been good lately, really out of form. I, I don't think they've been many goals. I'm going to go championship favourite scoreline of 1-1. One, one. Right, next up, it's Middlesbrough. They're at home to Bournemouth. 
at the Riverside Stadium. Uh, Millsborough nil nil at Stoke. They should really have taken that chance from Duncan Watmore. Bournemouth lost at home to Blackburn, who are pretty much in form. Now the gap's starting to close at the top of the table. Yeah, and not just the gap closing to three points between second and third. They haven't won in five games, Craig, and they've only picked up three points. They've let in goals galore in them, nine in the last five, barely scoring in the last two either. Just the one against Fulham from the centre kick, which teams will be wise to now. So there are some big concerns against Bournemouth. We've said it the last two or three weeks now. It's so parallel to what happened under Jason Tindall last year. And that's why we weren't getting so excited towards the start. Having said that, they don't lose many and Blackburn are in brilliant form. It's a massive kick in the teeth, Sky picking this for lunchtime. I've got to mention a TV pick because Bournemouth to Middlesbrough for a half 12 on a Saturday is just ridiculous, but still. Middlesbrough, decent away at Stoke, three unbeaten now. And they're in that playoff mix. They're five points off. They're coming towards January with Chris Wilder. I think they'll be happy. I think this will be a draw. I think both teams will be relatively happy with it. I'm going to go for a a pretty lethargic affair at lunchtime. I'm going to go for the championship's favourite scoreline. I, I don't think there's going to be much in this. It'll be two different style of football. Uh, Mills were still feeling their way out on the Christy Wilder. Bournemouth, yeah, Blackburn took full, full advantage, really. I know the first goal was no goal, and then you got uh, Van Hecker was obviously got the second goal and looked a bit more ruthless, uh, I'll be honest with Blackburn. Um, I think it's going to be another defeat for Bournemouth. I'm going to go 1 0 to Middlesbrough. Right, next up, it is Blackburn versus Bournemouth City at Ewood Park. Blackburn, which you said, they just won 2 0 at Bournemouth. Birmingham had that 2 0 lead, but blew it. Blackburn, the, probably the best thing to happen to Blackburn was losing 7 0 to Fulham. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned it at the time. It doesn't matter if you lose one game heavily, if it means you're consistent the rest of the time. And by the top side in the league, they've been consistent in the last two months, and you can't ask for more than that. The, the worry is going to be that there's some slight January transfer speculation coming around Ben Brereton and Diaz. It's going to be interesting to see how they deal with that and whether they're tempted by any offers. And I, I mean, the reason I was laughing in the build up to this, Craig, is this is like the ultimate championship banana skin, isn't it? The one where you've just got to go for a home win, but you know there's an inevitable round the corner. Birmingham defensively were poor against Millwall, poor late on against Cardiff and... If they're like that against Blackburn, Blackburn will take advantage. At home, Blackburn have been excellent this season. They've got the third best record, uh, the fourth best record, sorry, and it's only blighted really by that defeat against Fulham. Birmingham on the road, not as strong as they were last year. I'm going to go for, I think, big. 3-0 to Blackburn because they've kept four. No, 3-1. They've kept four clean sheets in a row, but that's got to go at some point. 3-1 to Blackburn. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Wow. Hear me out. Uh, obviously, Blackburn are on terrific form right now. Can't really complain. But they do have that game in them, especially at home, when they concede silly goals. And I feel like with Birmingham's aerial threat, Troy Deeney, probably one of the ones to wind up the centre half. I can see him doing it. Can they keep Burton Diaz out of the game? Probably not. That's where I'm getting the 2-2 draw on but Blackburn are capable of being silly at the times at home. So that's why I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw, even though it'll probably end 4-0 to Blackburn. Moving on, Blackpool, they're at home to Peterborough United. Blackpool, really out of form, lost to Derby. No goals in the last three games, three straight defeats. Peterborough, fantastic win against Millwall. Yeah, Peterborough, very, very good. Johnson Clark Harris did what I think... Not many people can do to a Millwall centre-half partnership. He bullied them off the ball, he out-muscled them, he outworked them, and in the end, he was gifted space for the winner. So you've got to give him credit for that. And at half-time, to be honest, I thought that game was over. I thought it would be a comfortable Millwall win, and off we go, Peter Brown going to score. So fair play to them. They're excellent at home. We've said this all season, though. Peter Brown away from home are a very different proposition. The only game they won, though, was against Hull, one of the fellow promoted sides, and Blackpool are the other. And I think, Craig, they're facing them at the perfect time because, as you mentioned, they haven't scored for four games now. They lost the last three. They're starting to concede silly goals. The creativity's gone. And maybe that momentum that came up with winning the playoffs is gone too. At home, they're not particularly good. They're the fifth worst in the league. So after your probably shock prediction in the last one, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to go for Peterborough to win. I don't think they'll keep a clean sheet, but I'm going to go for two goals to one. 
And I think it'll probably be their last away win of the season. Oh, come on. It's not going to be their last away game win of the season. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> I see ridiculous that you said that. Totally disagree. Blackpool will score a goal. Peterborough will score. Championship favourite score line. I think Blackpool will be more delighted that they've got a point just to stop that run. Um, ideally, they do want to win games, but slightly creeping down the table, down the 17th. Luckily, they've got a bit of a gap to Reading in 21st, so they need to stop the world. But championship favourite score line for me, Blackpool won, Peterborough won. Right, next up, it's Bristol City versus Huddersfield Town at Ashton Gate. Bristol City, another late goal for them. Huddersfield conceded a late goal. This time they're at home to Coventry. Yeah, Huddersfield, so close to getting that win, obviously. It was the one that turned the championship predictions in your favour last weekend. But they still haven't won in four. Yes, that will give them confidence, but they don't look great, Huddersfield. That They had a great start, which is going to ultimately save them comfortably, but they've not been brilliant since. And away from home, they've been pretty poor all season. Only won two of their 11 games, albeit they often only lose by the odd goal. And Bristol City, as we mentioned the last couple, are now unbeaten in three home games. They're winning games at home. They're looking pretty confident at home. And I'm going to go for them to nick it. It was a crucial late equaliser against Hull. If they hadn't have got that, there would have only been one point between them in the table. Now Bristol City can look at mid-table instead. And they're going to catch Huddersfield on points with a 1-0 win. I'm going to go same scoreline with you, but opposite way. Yeah, obviously Bristol City come back fair, uh, late on. Fair enough. Uh, Huddersfield, they'll be disappointed they couldn't hang on. I thought they defended quite well. Coventry obviously putting pressure on in the second half. Gutted. I I don't know why the marking was. It was poor. So poor. It was poor. I don't know why the keeper was diving out the way as well. I'll I'll be brutally honest. Um, Gutting for them. But I'm going to go for them to bounce back from that because that will really hurt them. I'm going to go 1-0 to Huddersfield. Next up is that team that scored later on against Huddersfield. It's Coventry City. They're at home to Stoke. Uh, Coventry, the late goal specialists in the league so far this season. Stoke, a uh, pretty boring nil nil, which I currently guessed. Yeah, it was a a pretty nothing game, wasn't it? But let's be honest, for Stoke, they're still picking up points. I know their their home form's not quite what it was, but away from home, they've not been the worst this season. They're a top ten team on their away form as well. There's not really much in their games. They basically score one a game and have conceded just over one a game on the road. So. It would suggest that we're heading towards Championship's favourite scoreline territory. And add to that, that Coventry have drawn four of their last five. It's a pretty solid pick. I really don't know what score to go for. I'm certain it's going to be a draw. 2-2. And I have no basis for that because everything will suggest it's going to be lower. I think you're right on lower in goals. Um, But there's going to be three points for the home team for me. Obviously, Coventry need to get out of that draw zone at the moment. Four draws at the last five gone out of the playoffs now but they are playing Stoke who are in the playoffs only by a point ahead of them this is where the weirdness of the championship happens because team hasn't won in five six games will probably win this game uh, Stoke two wins out of the last five a win two losses a win and a draw I think it's going to be a loss for them. I'm going to go 2-0 to Coventry. I think it'd be a quite a, a good spectacle of a game. Right, next up, City Ground. It is Nottingham Forest versus Hull City. Uh, what a return uh, for Steve Cooper going back to his old side with a 4-1 away victory. Hull still unbeaten, but could have been a lot better if they held on. It could have, but it was another decent performance. And I wouldn't be too downhearted by it. I think that the important thing for them is to keep picking up points now. They're above that point a game. If they've got the investment fresh in January, they can then go and improve the squad. Because I'm going to say it now, for the squad that's available there, to what Grant McCann's doing, I think he's doing a phenomenal job and deserves more credit than he's getting. Having said that at the moment, I still think the last relegation spot is between them, Peterborough, and possibly Blackpool. I think this is going to be a really tough ask for Hull. I don't want to read too much into the Forest scoreline because the last two goals went through the Swansea goalkeeper and they were the third goal was just laughable. It was comedic the way it went in. And the Swansea defending gave Nottingham Forest a lot to uh, work with. So Forest in great form. I mean, look at them now, Craig. Two months ago, would we have predicted them to be an eight, four points off the playoffs? It's absolutely insane. They're going to probably win comfortably because before that, it was three clean sheets. They've not let in more than one in a game in the last six. And when they're on form going forward, they score goals. They'll get one from a set piece and one other. 2-0 Nottingham Forest. 
I don't think we would have predicted not for us to score four goals, let alone winning the game at Swansea. <laughs> Maybe it's technically like Steve Cooper's got that in, into them and say, look, we can press, we can play this sort of way to score goals. And just basically told like your Johnsons, your Grabbins, you're, you're strikers, you can score goals. You, you prove that you can score goals in this championship, you go and do it. And uh, and it's given them a loon lease of life. Oh, they'll be disappointed, uh, obviously not holding on, but it, it's better than it was. They were pretty much down there. It would probably, we would have said Hull and Barnsley would, would go down, um, but Hull again, having that fighting chance, still unbeaten in a long time. I don't think it's going to be as easy what people would probably predict, despite the result last week. I think it'd be uh, for us to win 2-1. And the final game is on Monday night. It is Fulham versus Sheffield United. Fulham, obviously, we just uh, briefly talked about Luton. They did play him at the weekend, Drew 1-0. Sheffield United didn't play because they were supposed to play QPR. So we'll, we'll go on to Fulham. Three straight draws. Mitch Fitz scores finally after two games without a goal. I thought they got their goal was offside. But other than that, Fulham didn't really do anything. But they didn't create as many great chances as I thought they would. I still think they looked a very decent side. They looked pretty solid defensively from open play. And look, uh, maybe I'm just being too optimistic here, but I just thought it was a great game. And I thought both teams were very good. Fulham clearly aren't in the best form they've been in this season. Back to back to back to back draws. Three one alls in a row. A nil nil with Derby before that. And the two sides at the top are getting pegged back a little bit. They will be looking over their shoulder at West Brom and Blackburn, five and six points behind them. The problem in this game is a similar to the QPR one. Sheffield United were in great form with three wins in a row before the, the game that was called off last week. And you have to be of one or two schools of thought. Have they had time to work on the training ground with Paul Heckenbottom? And are they going to be even better from this game? Or is that just going to take the momentum away from them? I feel it's going to take it and I did say Sheffield United start would go eventually and although recent form would suggest the opposite I'm going to go for oh Sheffield United are better on the road but I'm going for 2-1 to Fulham yeah I'm, I'm going to go for draw yeah Fulham I don't think they did much to help Mitrovic in my opinion I think Mitrovic just wanted to fight Bradley and <laughs> wanted to square up to the referee he could have done a lot more for me, Mitrovic, which surprised me in a way. But for them, are oh, capable of conceding goals. Look at the marking for the Adebayo goal. He just ran straight through to the middle of the, the back line. So this Sheffield United team can be capable of destroying it, but not enough to win the game for me. I'm going to go 1-1. And let's have a quick recap of what we just predicted in match day 23. Very tight. I think we kind of surprised ourselves with last weekend's score lines to today and it was a bit of a mixture, but the, the, the standout result in this one is the first game of Barnsley with West Brom, which Danny Cody has predicted a 4-1 victory for the away side. And those are predictions from Match Day 23. Do you agree with us or disagree with us? Let us know in the comment section down below and give us your predictions for this weekend's action. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.